Hello, friends. This is the Tell It Like It Is podcast, and I'm your host, Alexi Bailey. Today, I have a very special guest with us, Charlie Johnson. How are you, sir? Good, man. Good. How are you? All right. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. Um, I was very intrigued by the work that you do. Um, you do a lot of work with the spiritual path, and um, I wanted to see if you could tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah, for some, for some odd reason, uh, early in my life, um, uh, I had the words come out of my mouth that I wanted the highest level knowledge. I wanted access to the highest level knowledge. <clears throat> I didn't really mean, uh, understand what that meant. So I built a business, um, gained access to a lot of money because I thought that that higher level knowledge would mean that I would need money to gain powerful people or get access to the higher level people. Uh, that was not the case. Um, I walked away from that business that was going to gain me access to that higher level knowledge in 2011. And about a year later, I met my teacher, <clears throat> a very enlightened individual, um, was Maharishi's personal assistant for many years back in the 70s and 80s. And uh, that began the last eight or nine months, I'm sorry, eight or nine years journey of uh, seeking that higher knowledge. All right. So what are we talking about here? Higher knowledge for a human being is understanding that we are spiritual beings having a physical experience. I, uh, well, I, you know, if you were to ask me that question two years in, four years in, six years in, you're going to have a different answer. Um, as far along as I am now, knowing that I know very little, knowing even less than I knew when I started, I think that answer is going to be different for everyone. Um, the higher level knowledge for me, uh, as it's unfolded, was those deeper level questions. Where did we come from? <clears throat> what's the absolute? What's the one? What's truth? Because I never understood how such an intelligent Republican and such an intelligent Democrat could be at so be so at odds with each other. I never understood how a Catholic and an atheist could not understand how they were both coming from the same side yet they hated each other. I never could understand all of the wars, the religious wars, how many people have died over the name of division or my God's better than your God. I never could fathom that when I was younger. So I wanted that truth. I wanted to get past those boxes, those constructs, those, that division, that conflict. So the higher level knowledge for me was what is it that's past Catholicism and atheism, past Buddhism, Hinduism? What is past meditation? What is past Zen? What is past Republican and Democrat? What is past black and white? What is it that we all came from? Because if it's God, we all came from God. If it's the Big Bang, we all came from the Big Bang. We're all coming from that same source. I wanted to know that. I didn't want an individual truth. I didn't want to get to know myself. I wanted that highest level, absolute truth. So at this point, are you coaching? Uh, yeah, there's quite a few people that will cross my path and, and seek some guidance on the path just to kind of... Uh, Help them understand, you know, if their if their world is kind of falling apart, their beliefs are falling apart, their constructs are falling apart. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll help them up the mountain. In my experience, I think that you know, at this point, I've gotten to a point where I can say that human beings are meant to be programmed, right? What, what do you mean? Um, you're born as a blank slate, and you learn things, you learn social norms. You learn how to speak the language. You learn the behaviors. You 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 you're born as a blank slate, and you're meant to learn these things. Okay. Yeah. Just here to evolve, be a human, not escape it. Yeah. And I think a part of the issue is that some of us are receiving wrong programming, which is causing us to fall apart at different points in our life. Sure. I mean, and that comes from the generation before us and the ignorance before us, and that was part of the process I wanted to learn. Right. You know, our, our parents are teaching us what they knew, what they learned from their parents and so on and so on and so on, right? Uh, again, the Republican and the Democrat. If you grew up in a Republican family, you're probably gonna be Republican. If a Democrat, you know? Uh, so we are being programmed and conditioned by the people who love us and they mean the best for us, but ignorance begets more ignorance. I wanted to get past that ignorance. I wanted to get past those individual truths that have created so much conflict and division on our planet. And you are correct. We are programmed from a very early age. And our parents love us, our aunts and uncles love us, our brothers love us, our teachers love us. Everyone loves us, but they fail to see the ignorance of their own doing, and it's passed down to generation after generation. Because look how many, I mean, just for the last two or 3,000 years, 
We are still fighting over the same God, doing the same things to each other, treating each other terribly. But yet we've got better cell phones and better cars and we're going to the moon and we're going to Mars. Like not much has changed other than technology. As human beings at their core, we're still incredibly divided. Now, based on your work, how, how do we address this? <clears throat> Clarity. Um, I think the removal of ignorance. I think the uh, vulnerability of being open. Um, understanding, again, this is going to be repeated and it's going to drive everyone crazy. Understanding uh, just how divided we are, the Republican and the Democrat, seeing that they're both, it's, it's just opposite sides of the same coin. The Catholic and the atheist, the, the, the Buddhist and the, the Hindu, just understanding that the that one source, that absolute source that birthed this entire relative world of forms is all that same. Every religion is the same. Every skin color is the same. Every, every uh, politician is the same. All of this stuff is the same. And it's a, a slow winding path. But if you can find that correct guidance, with the correct teaching, they can slowly remove that ignorance away by answering questions that you slowly start to ask. You know, there's a lot of Catholics that are starting to uh, question Catholicism. There's a lot of Mormons here in Utah that are questioning Mormonism. There's atheists that are questioning atheism. There's a lot of people that are seeing that rubber band from opposite ends just being tightened. And they're wondering if there is a, a different way. So they're starting to ask different questions. And if you can find or skip across someone who's neutral, who can answer those questions from an incredibly neutral state, with no bias or no Republican or Democrat bias or no you know, Catholic or atheist bias, then you can start to remove the grease from the windshield of consciousness. Because the only reason why we choose sides is out of fear. And the only reason we have fear is because our clarity of our consciousness that we perceive the world in is just caked full of grease. If, if, you, if you got in a car and I got in the passenger seat and you were driving down the freeway and it was caked full of Crisco, I'm getting the hell out of the car. What we don't understand is the mass majority of the adults, that's how we're going about the world. Now it's the blind leading the blind. So we're all kind of doing the same thing. We kind of bump into each other, but we don't know any better. We've got to remove the grease from that windshield. Um, so is meditation a part of that process? Absolutely. Meditation, a good meditation that allows you to transcend past the mind and the body, uh, allows you to loosen the attachment to the thoughts, loosen your attachment to the identity of the mind and the body. Um, expand your awareness. The, the analogy I, I always use that uh, makes sense is Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans. If you, your mind is like Hurricane Katrina, it started when you were born, it's never going to stop until you put a foot in the grave. If you were born in New Orleans and you had a forever Hurricane Katrina, you wouldn't know any different. You would just think it was windy the whole time. You wouldn't see anything outside of that. Once you expand your awareness, you can you can get your ass out of New Orleans. You can visit Alabama. You can visit Texas. You can visit um, Oklahoma, Utah, Pennsylvania, all of those states where Katrina didn't bother, right? If you expand your awareness, you can get past where those people talk about no thought process, the no thought state. The mind never stops. That's the big, huge uh, misinterpretation that most people think about with Buddhism and Zen, thinking they're going to clean slate their mind or they're going to shut their mind off or they're going to manipulate their mind. You didn't start it. You have no possibility of changing it, shifting it, manipulating, or stopping it. What you can do is you can expand your awareness. You can spend more time outside of that Hurricane Katrina. You can visit different cities and different states as you expand the awareness, as you loosen attachment to Hurricane Katrina, as you loosen attachment to those thoughts so they impact you less. And with that, meditation is the best way, I, I believe. I know a lot of Christian people who are skeptical about meditation because you know they think it's a part of Buddhism and Buddhism is like something that they don't believe in. But the, the thing that I try to remind them is that you're supposed to be, you can get this done through your form of the prayer, your form of you know, that kind of thing. Completely agree. But like you said, that closed offness of all of these religions versus the others thinking that I can only pray, not meditate. It keeps a lot of people in the dark. A lot of people in the dark. So early on, um, talk to us a little bit about what, you're, what you were thinking early on. You said you had a business plan. What was that like? <laughs> well, well, I had a business. I had a good-sized business that uh, I gained access to at a very early age. 
um, we did quite well. And the reason why we pushed so well is we were having a good time. We were having fun with it. We had good employees. We had a great atmosphere. But I was wanting access to more um, more capital, more more money in a sense, because I thought that that higher level knowledge that I wanted and requested, I thought it was going to be I thought it was going to be expensive. I thought I was going to need access to, to wealthier people, to more powerful people, and they wouldn't let me in the door if I didn't have what they had. Right? That, that was the ignorance of me in my 20s. But again, the universe has a way of giving you what you want. So it had me leave that business in 2011. And then that's when I met my teacher. And the rest is history. So where are we going? Um, do you see humanity getting any better? Like, are we waking up? Um, one of the questions I had for you was, um, are, are the majority meant to be sheep? I don't know if they were meant to be. Um, <clears throat> that's the way it is. Uh, that's the certain level of consciousness on this planet. Um, <clears throat> See, the, the, the issue humans have with these type of questions and these type of understandings and these, try, and these types of trying to figure stuff out is we, we created time so that you and I knew at 12 p.m. you and I were going to be on this call. Time is a legit thing. I don't want, I want to be late for you. I don't want to be late for this interview. But the universe doesn't see time. So our little 80 years on this planet, our couple thousand years, our hundred thousand years of whenever we think humans here, our millions of years is just nothing right? What the question is, is it's not about being sheep. It's <clears throat> why are we here? And a lot of people have a lot of different definitions, but I think the simplest answer is always the best, right? Occam's, Occam's razor, I think it is. We are here to evolve, nothing more. We, if, if, if we think about it, <clears throat> where are we going? iPhone 20, we're going to go to Mars. We're going to take this level of consciousness to Mars and start fighting over resources at Mars. Like we're not, we're not, we don't really have an end point. We don't have, we, we can be a inter, interplanetary species. We can expand we can expand technology. We can go learn about aliens. We can go learn about all of this stuff, which I believe is 1000% real, correct. And everyone's talking about it, <clears throat> but where are we going? We're just expanding. And it's a very simple answer that I give a lot of people who give me really deep questions and they hate it because it's so simple. It really upsets them because they're thinking they're gonna get this intelligent question. I think, the reason we're here to evolve, whether we're sheep or wolves or whatever you want to call it, is just the natural tendency of the soul to evolve. Just like a 14-year-old turns 15 after 365 days of year being 14. It's just the natural evolution of the soul. There's, there's not much more. We're, we're, we're here to strip away the resources of the earth and move to Mars. We're here to build technology. We're here to be better humans. We're here. It's, there's a myriad of, of different meanings and purposes for people on this planet. And a lot of people will go down that path. But I think the simplest is we're here to evolve. And I don't think the universe sees good and bad and right and wrong and up and down like we claim to with our divided mind that is always continuously boxing things in. What kind of patterns are you seeing in terms of your clients? <clears throat> A lot of questions, a lot of um, a lot of uh, uh, fear, in a sense, because whether you're 40 years on the spiritual path and you finally wake up and realize that those 40 years were just you spinning your wheels, um, uh, you know, Catholics and Mormons and very devout religious people, <clears throat> like uh, a guy I'm working with, his entire family, upon grandparents, upon grandparents, were all preachers. And he just didn't want to do it. And he's more, more in line with this, where he's trying to get past Catholicism, past Buddhism, past, like past them all. Um, a lot of people are just simply naturally having the courage to ask those questions. Because, uh, again, an 11-year-old turning 12, and you know, an 18-year-old is not better than a 12-year-old. But at some point, I think a lot, of more, a lot more people on this planet have these type of questions that they're just too scared to ask. But as they naturally evolve, which the universe will naturally push them to evolve, they will gain the courage to ask the question, who really was Jesus? Who really was Buddha? What is Buddhism? What is Catholicism? Asking these simple questions. And then they start seeking out different people, different books, just the natural evolution. 
just like a kid in junior high had certain curiosities and preferences and that changes in high school we just naturally evolve but that natural evolution of our age and the things that we're used to and growing up and going from 5'11 to six foot is natural that we don't have a tendency to control so the stuff that goes on up here we're always continuously seeking security and as soon as the questions come in that doesn't create security actually creates doubt it scares the hell out of people so they start searching for someone who can actually make them feel secure again now i can make them feel secure for a certain amount of time but as this natural evolution of the soul comes they're going to have questions that can only be answered by them and they'll never be able to distract themselves meditate it away practice it away teach it away or some type of trick that they've learned on the spiritual path they're just going to have to sit with it and face it and that's a terrifying thing for most human beings so the reason why i do the work that i do is that i find that people struggle to wake up People struggle to, they, they might see the signs, they may have some sense that something's off or this doesn't make sense, but the programming is very strong. You know, grandma is still watching them. You know, they can't let go because of mom and dad. They built their whole life around these ideas and they're not going to allow them, even when they see, even when they feel a push to change, they're going to hold on to the ideas. Yeah. I mean, that, that is what you just said is the foundation of why the world is the way it is today. That is why everything is so extreme. That's why everyone's standing up for their beliefs. That's why everyone's standing up for what they think. That's why everyone's fighting to get the other side to understand that they're right and we're wrong, et cetera, et cetera. We are just stretching that thing because everyone is doubling down. The few who are, have the courage to ask the questions and, and face that fear are naturally going with the flow of the river. And it may be a class five rapid and they may be getting their ass kicked, but they don't have a choice. The mass majority are turning upstream and trying to like fight upstream continuously, doubling down that Catholicism is the way, doubling down that Republicans are the way, doubling down that whatever they were built off of for 40 or 50 years is the way, and you're gonna know it, and I'm gonna bust their ass, and I'm gonna tell them they're wrong, and they're just fighting and struggling and suffering and pain. Here's the world you got. Look at TV, look at the news, look at the shootings, look at the airplanes, look at COVID, everything is doing this. This is the natural tendency. Everyone thinks this is, <clears throat> a bad thing but what comes before creation destruction this is a natural tendency of of the universe and if more people went with the river it'd be a little less it'd still be painful it's not peace and bliss it's still it'd be a little less um tough on people but as you said they're so deeply programmed and as soon as they feel fear they're going to double down on their beliefs and that causes exactly what we're seeing right now um, so for a long time, I think I was focused on trying to make the world a better place, trying to get like-minded people to break out of the box and do something different, build community for, for people who get it. And I find that even the people who are on the path, they're slow to go to the next step, right? Everyone in their, you know, is this kind of, like, yeah, I get it. Yeah, I'm with you. But uh, what, what does that look like? So it, there's so much of an uphill battle. And it's like, yeah. I don't want to, you know, that's when I get a little bit, I get a little bit, because um, I see how difficult it is. Yeah. Uh, one of the best things that I ever learned from Ram Das and his teachings is he everything he did for the groups and the people who loved him and his heart was open and the people that he worked with who were on their deathbed because they loved being around him the thing he always says the only thing i can do for you is work on my consciousness the only thing i can do for you is be clear and in that open space so if i come into the room and you want to cry you can cry if you want to come into the room and laugh and laugh if i come into the room and you want to be incredibly pissed off because you got the short end of the stick because you're dying of cancer at 30 i'm going to be there for you he always stressed and talked about the only thing I'm doing for you group of people who came to listen to me or read reading my books or whatever is work on my clarity. And I did the same thing between my business and talking to you, I ran the pay it forward foundation. And I had such an ego of thinking that I was going to be the one who saved the world. 
I was going to get, we got tens of millions of people involved with the book and the movie and the foundation and got bracelets all over the world. And it was so fun. And we did Ted talks and everything else. And then one day I'm like, holy shit, this is just like, oh my, I just walked away. Just like I did my business. I, I, it clicked. I'm like, this is all ego. My God, I, I actually have the audacity to think I'm going to put the debt in the universe. Now, <clears throat> for the people who believe they can, they need to go burn that out. Steve Jobs left a dent. You're leaving a dent. I'm leaving a dent. Everyone's leaving a dent in the universe and what they believe. But again, the dent we left in junior high is going to be the dent, different dent that we left in high school. We're going to have different curiosities and beliefs. So you're naturally evolving to the point where years ago you wanted to build this community and you want to bring everyone together and you wanted to build this thing that would expand out and get everyone involved. But now the question you're saying now is, I, that's, that's, that's not the point. And it's not pessimism. It's not that you're giving up. That's where a lot of people get lost is thinking that, oh, you two are giving up, huh? You're just going to start working on yourself. You're going to be selfish. If, if you want to help the world, you better get your own shit in order first. You know how many people are psychologists? You know how many people are helping the world because they don't want to deal with their own stuff? You know how many people I would never even ask if, uh, if, I, if I should have lunch with a ham or a turkey sandwich because I know what's going on psychologically up in their mind? I've, I've, I've not, after nine, 10 years of this entire path, having the highest level teachers and the high, highest level clarity, I have nothing figured out, but I'm okay with that. That's the whole point of this process. It's like the video I just posted today. The enlightened, awakened individuals on this planet do not have it figured out. What they figured out is that they're never going to figure it out and they're okay with it. So in lines with what you said, that <clears throat> it becomes difficult. It's not that it's difficult. It's that you wake up to the clarity of understanding that everyone's on their own path. They're at different grade levels or different ages of their, of their soul. And they will get to where you're at, just like you got to where you're at on their own time. Where we get caught is in our human divided mind of 80 years and the planet being stripped of its resources. We're thinking, shit, we got to go now. We got to go now. We're going to blow ourselves up. One of the greatest things that Adi Ashanti ever said is, this world will probably wipe humanity off the planet. And I'm okay with that. Like we're, the planet's going to be just fine. It was just fine without us. It's, it's, we're, you know, we're kind of messing it up now and it's going to be just fine without us again. And then maybe in a couple million years, it'll bring humans back to the planet. I don't know, but our urgency is very well founded because of what it's doing. How many people are going to be really hurt as the ocean levels rise. But again, to your, to your point, we can't force anyone to do anything at any time. <laughs> Even like you said, the people who are on that same path and who see what you see, bringing them together with their own biases and ego and their own timelines and their own families and where they live and what they think the world should do versus what you think the world should do. Holy hell, man. Like that's, I am completely, completely in agreement with you. So uh, just as much as I started teaching and helping people and teaching thousands to meditate, I don't really push that anymore. I just post stuff. And if people have questions, I ask questions and I live my life. I don't really feel as if I'm uh, teaching them anything. What did you say? You don't push to get people to meditate anymore? <clears throat> no, no, no. If they, if they come to me and want to meditate, they will. I used to be, you know, my personality is very outgoing and I would, uh, the conversation would always be surrounded around meditation. I would say, you should meditate. And I would teach him and I would kind of push it on him. Now, um, you know, as many people as I've taught meditate, I'm sure most people, you know, most of them don't meditate anymore. Um, and I realized that I, I just need to let them be on their own path. If they really want something like I really want a truth, I found it. I found a guy to help me and I got really aggressive with him and I wouldn't let him out of my sight. If people really want something, they, they'll make it happen. If they don't, they'll make an excuse. I, I don't want to spend my time and energy on people who don't care about this stuff. That's perfectly fine. I'm, I'm not doing any better, and they're not doing any more damage by not meditating. They're, they're, they're just being them. Right? The, in the grand scheme of everyone walking each other home, like Ram Dass says, is, again, an 18-year-old is not better than a six-year-old. They're just different parts of the evolution. And to get a six-year-old to understand trigonometry, good luck. Not there yet. No. Okay, so what do you call this work that you're doing? Is this spirituality? What do you call this? Oh, Lord. Um, <clears throat> mm. 
clearing up consciousness, creating clarity, just being there for questions. Um, it can be anything. I mean, I don't really like the world spiritual because that's just another box or construct like a religion, but it's usually about the spiritual path. A lot of people have spirituality in them. They want to have, they have questions about psychedelics. They have questions about Buddhism. They have questions about meditation. They have questions about why they're doubting things. So it's just an all encompassing, helping people gain clarity because whatever funnels through me is just neutral and clear. I don't care if they listen to it or they don't. I don't have little Charlie involved trying to convince them of something I want them to do. I'm not telling them to do what I think I should do in that fearful state. I just going off my direct experience of pushing myself through absolute hell through this path and having the teacher I had of just simply passing along. This is what happened when I went through it. One of the things that I've realized, cause I, I, I can I was um, raised Christian. Okay. And one of the things that I have realized, and when I look at everything in context, I think that the Christian narrative is a good intro into spirituality. Sure. There's a lot of people who say, well, like you said, atheists, but not just atheists, but people who just, they, they've never experienced the Bible, right? I think that the Bible and Christianity it gives you the idea of something beyond the physical realm. And if you've closed, if you've never been exposed to the Bible or Christianity, you may just think of yourself as just a human being, just having a physical life. And so I think that Christianity is very helpful in that way for you to think about, you know, it gives you a, a structure for your life. It gives you a sense of morality. It gives you community and it helps you on your spiritual journey. I think one of the issues is that then you get to a point where you're, you begin to think that the Bible is the beginning and the end all of spirituality. And I think that's where 99% of Christians stumble big time. And to the point where they can't even agree with other Christians. <laughs> so yes. some some christians are saying saturday's the day some are saying sunday's the day and if you're not on my day i don't want to see you yeah and if you get to if you're thinking like that that should be a, a light bulb should go off that this is wrong because this, the same book was preaching unity mm -hmm. and you're fighting over which day you should go you know when you should wash when you shouldn't wash. like we get petty so I find that it's a great stepping stone, but I find that most people I know are Christians and it's hard for them to make, to make progress past. And, and at the same time, these are Christians who haven't fully read the Bible. So they're kind of just, they were given this framework early on, not based on their own experience reading, um, just kind of like, oh, this is what they told me. And there's 1 billion people who practice this, so it can't be wrong. Yeah, I mean, it, re it really is that simple. And for the, you know, the 1.52 billion people that would agree with you about Catholicism being a good foot in the door, there's uh, over a billion people now that are atheists and would believe you're <laughs> that it's not, that it's the, the reason why there's all the wars, why there's all the conflict, why there's all the division. And then they would point to what you said, that there's there's more infighting just in Catholicism themselves. And how, how was that light bulb not going off that you guys are fighting? You know, it's, it's like uh, two high schools. Everyone's in high school. Everyone's in the grade. And my football team's better than your football team. Okay. All right. Well, I guess we'll, I guess we'll go to war for it. And uh, we'll see on Friday night who wins, <laughs> Saturday or Sunday. It's just <clears throat> that, was the, that was the main truth that was brought to my clarity through this path because I thought it would be rainbows and unicorns and I thought it would fix everything. What it's brought to me is a very direct, correct, clear, very direct, clear answer as to why we are so divided. As to why a Catholic hates an atheist and atheist hates a Catholic and a Republican can't get along with Democrat and why there's racism, why there's so much division, why there's war and why everyone doesn't get along. Very, very simple process. And it's not the other side, it's both. 
So this is the human struggle, right? We're, we're, we're fighting ourselves to wake up e even in the face of, you know, the knock on the door, we're still fighting it. We know that, like you said, school shootings is a very big one for me. Like we see a school shooting, we're like, oh, that's messed up, that's terrible. And we're, we're not doing anything about it. Like, I feel like, you know, like you said, for a long time, I was very much a, well, let's fix this. We can change the world. And there's so much infighting with people who agree, you know, on gun violence. Like, should we restrict guns? Should we have stricter tests? Should we, like, there's just so much fighting that in the end, nothing gets done. Then there's another shooting. Then we talk about it again. And yeah. That's, that's, that's basically the foundation of every conflict on this planet. Politics, governments, corporations, religions, war, guns, whatever topic is a hot button topic right now, just take that conversation you just said about one side fighting the other side, them not getting along, nothing changes, it stays the same, and just, re, just insert different topic, different word, different time. Goes for the same thing we talked about 10 minutes ago that We've been doing this for 2000 years, fighting over the same God in the same war and still hating each other for it. Um, have you heard of the Kabbalion by the three initiates? I've heard people talk about it, yes. One of the things that they talk about is that the illuminated don't get caught up in what the masses are doing. <clears throat> and that's pretty much what you're saying. The masses are gonna go around in circles and the lumen knows better because in the in the flip of a button it could switch to the other side and it's almost like don't even bother yeah and that's the natural you know evolution of the soul so you kind of just be patient with it under, understanding again that our our minds can't really understand time and that's where a lot of conflict uh is created between the illumined illuminated like you said the enlightened because the masses will look at them and say well shouldn't you care you know, it's kind of like the Siddhartha book. At the end of the book, he sits by the river and listens to the 10,000 voices. I've got a few friends in my life that absolutely hate the end of that book. Because with his abilities and what he knew, they believe they sh he should be out in the world fixing and helping, not sitting by the river listening to 10,000 voices. What he understood, <clears throat> what my teacher understands, what very awakened people understand is the whole awakens through them and they will start to do what they need. If they meant to teach, they're going to teach. But as we discussed 10 minutes ago, um, just talk to that person in the masses and say, Hey, didn't you tell your 12 year old, they couldn't have a cookie. Why is the kid eating a cookie? You can't even control your kid. And you think you want one of the illumined illuminated people to go out there and fix the world. Well, Jesus did. Well, let's hold on. Let's hold on a sec. We, we don't really know how that story unfolded. It's, you know, you got infighting in its own Catholicism and Catholicism was created not by Jesus. Jesus wasn't Catholic. Buddha wasn't Buddhist. Like, let's not, let's not really go down that path, but <clears throat> the illuminated and the awakened, they're, they're doing more for the whole than anyone could ever imagine by stepping out of that division and not creating more of it. <laughs> like all the revolutions and we're going to fight and we're going to pick it and we're going to protest and everything. I get it, I understand it, but you're just creating the same division that you hate the other side creates on you. And that, that topic is just on fire right now because oof, I even don't even wanna talk about it even on this because it's just gonna piss people off because again, you're gonna think that they're, you're stepping away from it. But the whole point of why we have what we have is because of this divided tool that picks a side and that side creates division, which creates conflict and the world we see. So very fundamentally and elementary and very childishly looking at this, that means the side that you despise is no different than you because they're creating the division that you are now fighting to get rid of, but which is gonna create the division upon them. It's just this constant back and forth. And there's this natural evolution that the illuminated understand and they just know it needs to be played out. No different than you 10 minutes ago saying, I wanted to bring everyone together. And now I realize it's not worth it because they're not going to join me. All I can do is work on myself. I mean, 
how do you just you know not get involved with helping the poor and 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 helping them see through you know the hurdles if you are meant to get involved you will look how many people are involved with the homeless how many people are involved with the poor how many people are involved with aids how many people are involved with disease and famine and refugees and do there are incredible amounts of people okay so just because the person there's one person that's helping with the clean water in Africa doesn't mean they despise homeless people. <laughs> Just we all have our part to play, right? So gaining <clears throat> what naturally the universe has wanted for me is to create more clarity for people so there's less division. The only way we get out of conflict is with less division. And do you think less division comes from Republicans and Democrats fighting each other, pulling the string, being more extreme? Do you think there's less division created between Catholics and atheists because they don't, they can't get, they can't understand each other? Do you think there's less division created by everything else? All these discussions we're talking about: gun control, politics, governments, up, down, right, wrong, global warming, or it's they think it's real or it's not. That is all division. That is all conflict. How do you minimize that? You minimize that by gaining clarity up here and understanding that you, as you fight for something, are creating the same division you are hoping to remove from the world. That's all ignorance. So if more people can remove just an ounce of ignorance, they're going to move forward in the world with less division and less division creates less conflict. That fundamentally cannot be argued because again, the reason why we have the conflict in the world we have today is because of division, because of the mind, because I chose a side, I'm right, you're wrong, period. How do we minimize division? Remove the ignorance, gain a little bit of clarity, and if we can remove just an, even an ounce of division, there's going to be less conflict in the world. It's so minimal with so how few people are awakened on this planet and how few people have the courage to become neutral that it's really not palpable for most people. Plus, the masses really don't care about that. They're more consumed with Trump's my man and he's coming back in 2024, come or hell or high water. No, Biden's my man. He's going to get reelected. That's all they're consumed with. And they will fight to the death. Jesus is the way. And all atheists are burning in hell. They will fight to the death for that. They're not thinking. Let me give you a real quick story. What you're talking about, the clarity, the truth, the understanding, less division, less conflict. <clears throat> there was a kid who met a teacher. Teacher was teaching him about this stuff, having a discussion like you and I, really just going back and forth. And he started to understand what his teacher was showing him. He was showing him clarity, less division, how to, how to create less conflict. And it dawned on him and he looked at his teacher and said, this is incredible information. This is incredibly simple. Why don't you have a line outside your door a thousand miles long with people seeking this? The teacher said, I need you to go around the village, knock on everyone's door and ask them what they want. And the student said, Oh, wow, there's like 3,000 people in this little village. And the teacher's like, well, you better get going. A couple months go by, the student did it. He knocked on every door and simply had a question. Hello, sir, ma'am, what is it that you want? And they would say, uh, more land, um, a better spouse, more money, less war, less conflict. Um, I, need, I, need, I need an ox, I need a horse, I need my kid not to go. Just thousands of things that they wanted, a better home, a silver, whatever, more food, world peace, whatever. And he came back to his teacher and his teacher said, so what did you find out? And the student said, well, you know, this is what I found out. And he just listed off hundreds, if not thousands of things. And the teacher said, what do you, what do you see is missing on all of those wants from all of those people who had a chance to tell you everything they need? And he's like, ah, oh, truth. People are not concerned about truth. People are not concerned about getting past their biases. People are not concerned about getting past the division and conflict that is in their mind because that's all they know. They were born in New Orleans. They're born with a consistent, continuous Hurricane Katrina as a mind, and they don't know anything different. We cannot get mad at a 10-year-old for being in fifth grade. So we should probably be teaching these things um, in school. It would be great to teach, talk about this more at an earlier age. But again, coming back to your point, like uh, a lot of Catholics would have issues with that. Buddhists would have issues with that. Atheists would have issues with that. Everyone has issues with that. So we have to teach the kids in an incredibly neutral way. And it really just kind of boxes them in and programs them, like you said. 
so I, you know, I, I started this journey, you know, the Tell It Like It Is podcast with hopes that we will talk about what it is that's happening in our world and think seriously about like the changes that we want to make. And I think you've summarized a lot of important things, you know, seeing past division, you know, Democrats and Republicans should be able to sit down and agree on most things. And I, I know for sure that the media is the cause behind a lot of the division. People are watching TV or reading some paper and they're coming back. They're just um, regurgitating points to each other and they're not talking, they're not listening and nothing's happening. And that's pretty much what you're saying. So, but, but, but one thing, so when we say the media is the issue, the media is only, the media is only a reflection of, of what is going to get people to watch them. The media is only a reflection of the masses. This, this is not, this is not, you cannot point your finger at one thing. The media does what they do because that's what gets people to watch them. So the masses are attracted to that garbage. The masses are at the same level of consciousness as the media. They just feed each other. The government's just a reflection of the people. This, you cannot point the finger at a government or a Catholic or an atheist, Republican or Democrat, or the media or the ups or downs or the powerful or the not powerful, the rich or the not rich. Everyone has access to this. There are low levels of consciousness at every point of this planet. And they're all, some are happy, some are sad, some are good, some are bad, some are Catholic, some are atheist. We cannot point the finger at anyone because every one of them is in ignorance and we're all just feeding each other. Sorry, continue. <laughs> so we should be, um, we should be sitting down and, and listening to each other more. Sure, that'd be great. Um, I'm, ass I'm assuming that the atheist thinks that no one really knows what happened at the beginning of time. So for yeah. you to have a book that has all the answers is a little <clears throat> bit far-fetched. Sure. Is, is that the atheist side? I, I guess. I mean, I, I can't speak for him. <laughs> I wouldn't want to speak for him. I wouldn't want to speak for a Catholic or a Buddhist. I wouldn't want to speak for anyone but myself. I, I just, no, I, I don't know what they think. They just, I just know they don't believe in God. <laughs> so you don't fall into a religion? Oh, Lord, no. 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 So are, I want to be, I, they, they create so much division. I want nothing to do with that. So you're not concerned about going to heaven? We do not have the capacity to understand anything after this we haven't figured out life how in god's name are we going to figure out what came before it or after it when one of the greatest things uh, one of the great teachers audio shot said is you will not know god until you realize you don't know what god is everything we build up of who he is who she is source energy universe whatever is a construct created by the divided mind the absolute created this relative world with a divided mind. The one created the two. The two cannot know the one. So if we think in our relative dualist, dualistic world, we have any capacity to know about heaven, different planets, different areas, different gods, this and that, where we're going, where we came from, good luck. I do not, I do not, uh, uh, I do not have the ego enough to, to, to state that I have any understanding of any of that i have I, again i haven't even figured out this earth this world uh getting past my thoughts not being stressed to think that uh i know about heaven or hell or uh, the big bang or god or no god i have no clue no one does tell us about your meditation practice um it's just a simple mantra based meditation that brings the mind inward and allows you to transcend i'm i'm a big a big proponent of transcending if you just meditate and watch your breath and meditate and watch your thoughts, you're kind of just doing what you do all day anyways. I think the whole point of meditation is to, to leave the body, to transcend, where, you know, you set a timer for 30 minutes, you start the mantra, and that 30 minutes goes by in a flash. Logical mind thinks, no way was that 30 minutes, because the logical mind can only know what it knows. So when you go back to the absolute, where you and I and the whole world came from, the whole relative world it came from, you're, you're spending time in your true nature, which then loosens the attachment to the mind, the body, and the thoughts, which creates the division. So take a really sticky piece of tape, put it on the table, rip it off, reapply, rip it off, reapply, rip it off, reapply. If we keep doing that, the tape gets less sticky. Every time you transcend, 
you're ripping off the attachment of the thoughts, the feelings, the division, the conflict, and all of those constructs that keep you in division and create conflict. So over time with consistent practice, you're lessening the stickiness of the stuff that creates all the division on the planet. So I'm, I'm a big proponent in a meditation that allows you to transcend back to the absolute. Um, is there anything that we missed? I don't think so. Um, Charlie, um, based on, you know, right now, I, I don't know. I Again, I just, I've always been a community builder and I do what I do because I believe in community. And <laughs> I feel like people get, people get that, you know, but they let their daily lives, they use the excuse of their daily lives to really take seriously a better life. And that's a part of the struggle. I see people struggling and I'm like, well, let's do this this way and we could, and then there, the walls go up, the excuses, and we go around and then nothing gets done two hours later. And then I find myself having that, those kinds of conversations over and over again. So I started the podcast to have some of them online to help other people kind of see through the, the tape. And, um, you know, hope, hopefully that it reaches people and that they start to think about this thing in a, in a different way. Well, that's perfect, man. I mean, if, if, you, if you are a community builder, continue to build communities until you don't want to build communities. You know, we, we, when we're in seventh grade, we need to play out seventh grade until we're in eighth grade and things are going to change. But if a person wants to help, the person thinks they can change the world, they need to go do that. They need to go do that. They need to ride that wave until it's over. Um, did you kind of, so what did you say about success in that past? If there's going to be limits. Well, it's not going to happen. What it, <laughs> success in what? Um, changing the world. And you were saying the ego and thinking. Oh, I, I think, I think change, changing the world, the success of changing the world uh, happens all the time. It's in constant change. I think, um, I think where a lot of people get lost is thinking they have to make some massive movement or massive community or millions of people need to know about. It. I think some of the, I heard a great teacher talk about that a homeless person giving up their jacket on a cold day has more of an impact on the universe than a, a billionaire who just stripped the world of, of its resources donating $10 million, right? So whether that's true or not, I, I, think, I think the success of changing the world happens all the time. I mean, some of the greatest teachers that we all look up to talk about those simple acts of kindness, those simple acts of smiling, those simple things you do for your family, for your neighbor, for a complete stranger, for someone who's, you know, a homeless person. <clears throat> I think that change happens all the time. I think we need to be more kinder to ourselves, more loving to other people, and just those little, kind of like with pay it forward. We, we really believed, and I still believe, that these little tiny kind of acts, kind of acts over an extended amount of time done by a lot of people can have an impact was the pay it forward in connection to the movie yeah yeah it was that foundation uh -huh. yeah. so what was your relationship to that um <clears throat> i created the pay it forward bracelet that went around the world that millions of them went to different countries that you would you know it would be a reminder to do a kind act when you did a kind act you took it off and handed it to the person so there was a human interaction uh, and then I just started running it. I took over for about four or five years and built up the board and traveled the world and did a bunch of talks on TED talks and schools and just tried to spread the word and got a lot of people going. So was that before the movie? Like how did it was after the, the movie was way back in 2000, <clears throat> I think 2001, my time there was 2000. 2011 to 2015, 2016. <clears throat> so, so it started in connection to the movie and then you got involved. Yeah, so the, the foundation was created after the success of the book and the movie by Catherine Ryan Hyde. And the foundation kind of sat dormant for about a decade. And then I came on and kind of grew it. Um, is it still going? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're getting books out and stuff into schools right now. Pay it forward really touched me because I remember one scene, the guy just gave his car away. Mm -hmm. Just like, yeah, go ahead. Yep. Yep. And, you know, I, Great movie. it made me think about the, um, 
the connection between that moment made me think about the early Christian church. When I talk about building community, I often go back to the early Christian church, you know, where they shared their, um, their possessions so no one was in wanting. And I think, you know, some, something similar to that is what we need, right? No one needs $100 million, $200 billion <laughs> when people are starving and these kinds of things. And just the idea that that exists is inhumane, I think. Yeah, that's, that's a whole other conversation, right? The, having access to that much money. Um, and I, th I think they were, I think most people at that, at that level try to do really good stuff with it. I think what people miss is <clears throat> they see those people on the Forbes list with that much money. What they don't realize is none of that's liquid cash. So there's not really much they can do with it. It's built into their business, which would then tank it. Um, yeah, more people could do a lot more. Um, and I would agree with you. What <clears throat> if you have a hundred million dollars? Why do you need two hundred? But different levels of consciousness, different levels of everything. Every time we go against the rich, or the rich go against the poor. It's division. It's conflict. I just whatever people want to do, do. If you want to go build a business, build a community. You want to be Catholic. You want to be atheist. You want to be Buddhist. You want to meditate. You don't. I don't really care. Just be kind. Do whatever you want. Just don't fight each other. Yeah, which is impossible, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Believe what you want, but you know, if if you're a, if you're a Catholic, you don't have to be against atheists. No, no, but the 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 reason why we choose sides is out of fear. So if it's based, if your foundation, oh, you're basically your foundational part of your life is out of fear, you are going to be defensive about everything that is not what you like or what you believe in. So it's impossible for people to uh, put a video out to each their own. Yeah, doesn't doesn't humans don't have that human nature to be each their own or we wouldn't have the world we have. Well, I hope we can get there. Right. Because I agree. Yeah. Like my mom, she's very Christian conservative. And, you know, I I don't think she's she, she has any negative bones in her body for anyone. So I think we can get there. I agree. I agree. All right, Charlie, thank you so much for taking the time today. Really appreciate this conversation. Um, is there anything, how, how can people get in contact with you if they wanna do more? Um, they could jump to Instagram uh, at Clear Your Lake. Uh, the website is clearyourlake.com and you can see the teachings and get in contact with me there. And you'll help them get grounded. <clears throat> I'll, I'll just help them answer any type of questions they have. All right. Thank you so much. Do you want to leave us with anything? No, man. I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate the back and forth with the dialogue. and It was fun. All right. All right. Charlie Johnson, clear your leg. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thanks, man.